All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyan, with me is Prashant Kumar Sinha. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says, family-based and dynastic parties damage democracy in the country after independence. Jammu and Kashmir Delimitation Commission order comes into force as a central government issue notification. Supreme Court transfers Gyanwapi Mosque case to Varanasi District Judge. India gets highest ever FDI of $83.57 billion in the last financial year. EPFO adds 15.32 lakh net subscribers in March, 20% more than February. Former Punjab Congress President Navjot Singh Sidhu sent to Patiala jail following his conviction in road rage case. DRI and Coast Guard seized 218 kilogram of high-grade heroin worth 1,526 crore rupees in international market from two boats off Lakshadweep coast. Nine new ministers inducted in Ranil Vikramasinghe's cabinet in Sri Lanka. Polling underway to elect a new parliament in Australia. IMD predicts relief from heat wave conditions across India from today. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals beat Chennai Super Kings by five wickets in Mumbai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that family-based and dynastic parties have caused terrible damage to democracy in the country since independence. He said these Parivarvadi and Vanshvadi parties have facilitated corruption, scams, nepotism and mismanagement in democracy and ruined the valuable time of the nation. Mr. Modi was addressing a meeting of the BJP National Office Bearers in Jaipur, Rajasthan through video conferencing yesterday. परिवारवादी पार्टियों ने देश में भ्रष्टाचार को धांधली को भाईपतिजावाद को इसी को आधार बनाकर देश का बहुत मूल्यवान समय बर्बाद किया है ये परिवारवादी पार्टियां आज भी देश को पीछे ले जाने पर तुली हुई है उनका सार्वजनिक जीवन परिवार से शुरू होता है परिवार के लिए चलता है परिवार के खातिर ही करता है इन परिवारवादी पार्टियों से निरंतर मुकाबला करना है लोकतंत्र के लिए ये सबसे घातक परंपरा है अगर लोकतंत्र बचाना है लोकतंत्र को सामर्थ्यवान बनाना है लोकतंत्र को मूल्य निष्ठ बनाना है तो हमें ये वंशवाद परिवारवाद की राजनीति के खिलाफ अविरत संघर्ष करना ही है the Prime Minister said it was the BJP alone that brought the lost faith of the country's youth in the last eight years after 2014. Mr. Modi accused opposition parties of trying to divide the nation on the basis of caste and religion. He said some political parties were injecting poison in the country for their own selfish interests. The Prime Minister said our mantra is Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas and Sabka Prayas. देश के लोगों की जो उम्मीदें हैं हमें वो पूरी करनी है देश के सामने जो चुनौतियां हैं हमें देश के लोगों के साथ मिलकर हर चुनौतियों को पार करना है और विजय के संकल्प के साथ आगे बढ़ना है और हम जानते हैं कि इसका मार्ग क्या है हमारा दर्शन है पंडित दीनदयाल उपाध्याय का एकात्म मानव दर्शन अंत्योदय हमारा चिंतन है डॉक्टर श्यामा प्रसाद मुखर्जी की सांस्कृतिक राष्ट्रनीति हमारा मंत्र है सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास और सबका प्रयास मिस्टर मोदी सेड एस बीजेपी वर्कर्स देव नो राइट टू सिट इन पीस जम्मू एंड कश्मीर डीलिमिटेशन कमीशन ऑर्डर ऑन इलेक्ट्रल सेगमेंट्स इन द यूनियन टेरिटरी केम इन टू फोर्स आफ्टर द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इशू द नोटिफिकेशन इन दिस रिगार्ड Union Law and Justice Minister yesterday issued a notification declaring May 20 as a date on which the order of the Delimitation Commission shall come into effect. The Delimitation Commission was headed by Justice Retired Ranjana Prakash Desai, former Chief Election Commission of India Sushil Chandra and JNK Election Commissioner KK Gupta. In its reorganization of electoral segments, the Commission has delimited 90 assembly seats for JNK out of which 47 are for the Kashmir Division, 43 for Jammu Division. 
For the first time, nine seats have been reserved for scheduled tribe candidates and seven for the scheduled caste candidates. Two seats will be nominated out of the Kashmiri Pandit community. In a significant development, both nominated members would have voting rights like the elected members. The commission has not made any delimitation for the 24 seats reserved for Pakistan-occupied part of Jammu and Kashmir. The Supreme Court has ordered transfer of Gyanwapi Mosque case to District Judge of Varanasi, a three-judge bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur, Surya Kant and P.S. Narasimha were hearing a petition challenging the filming of Varanasi's Gyanwapi Mosque. In its order, the Apex Court also said that having regard to the sensitivity of the civil suit, the case is transferred from Civil Judge Senior Division to Varanasi District Judge. The case was being heard by a trial court in Varanasi with the next hearing scheduled for Monday. The bench also observed that the need for fraternity between communities and need for peace is topmost for the court. Justice Chandrachur said that a sense of balance and calm is needed on the ground and a degree of healing touch. India has emerged as a preferred investment destination. It is evident from the fact that India has recorded highest ever annual foreign direct investment FDI inflow of 83.57 billion US dollars in the last fiscal year. In comparison to the FDI inflow received in the financial year 2014-2015, when the country had attracted FDI inflow of 45.15 billion US dollars, the FDI inflow registered growth of 85% in the last Last financial year. India has received over 301 billion US dollars in the last four fiscal years. As per the data of the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the country's FDI inflows have increased 20 fold since financial year of 2003 2004, when the inflows were at 4.3 billion US dollars only. India is also emerging as a preferred country for foreign investments in the manufacturing sector. The Employees Provident Fund organization, EPFO, has added 15,32,000 subscribers in March this year. This is about 20% more than 12.85 lakh enrolled in February this year. A month-on-month -month comparison of payroll data shows an increase of 2.47 lakh net subscribers in March 2022 compared to the net additions during February 2022. Age-wise comparison of payroll data showed that the age group of 22 to 25 years has been on the forefront by registering the highest number of net enrollments with 4.11 lakh additions to March 2022. Age-wise payroll data also indicated that many first-time job seekers are joining the organized sector workforce in large numbers. Gender-wise analysis showed that net female payroll addition is approximately 3.48 lakh during the month. The Department of Consumer Affairs, DOCA, has written to the registrars and presidents of the national, state and district commissions with regard to speedy redressal of consumer complaints. The department has requested not to grant adjournment for more than one month to ensure adhering to the timelines provided under the Consumer Protection Act 2019. It said in case of any delay in resolving the complaints beyond two months due to adjournment requests, the Commission may consider imposing costs on parties. In his letter, Secretary Department of Consumer Affairs, Rohit Kumar Singh, has emphasized on inexpensive, hassle-free and speedy justice to the consumers. Union Minister of State for Electronics and IT Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, has announced that the NASCOM will launch a portal to promote digitization of small and medium enterprises. Interacting with media persons in Ahmedabad, he said that the portal will bring SMEs as well as startups together on one platform to encourage SMEs to adopt digitally and to build capacity. He will attend the function of SMEs and startups today where this portal will be launched. Commerce and Industry Minister Piyush Koyal will lead the Indian delegation at the World Economic Forum WEF in Davos from the 22nd to the 26th of this month. The delegation will include Health and Family Welfare Minister Mansukh Mandavia, Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Hardeep Singh Puri, Chief Ministers and Senior Ministers of six states that is Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka and Telangana. 
several industry leaders will also participate in the deliberations of the World Economic Forum. This event would further help reinforce the country's position as an important and relevant stakeholder in shaping the global narrative, particularly as India assumes presidency of the G20 next year. The centre's flat concerns regarding the considerably slow pace of COVID-19 vaccination across states and Indian territories and urged them to significantly expedite the pace towards full vaccination coverage. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan yesterday reviewed the status of COVID vaccination with health secretaries and National Health Mission Managing Directors of states and UTs through a video conference. Speaking on this occasion, Mr. Bhushan highlighted the urgent need for an intensive mission mode push to COVID-19 vaccination. He asked, he asked them to plan for a two-month-long Har Ghar Dastak campaign 2.0 during June-July this year. The objective of the campaign is to vaccinate and saturate the eligible population groups for first, second and precaution doses through door-to-door -door campaigns. Former Punjab Congress President Navjot Singh Sidhu was sent to Patiala jail yesterday evening. Prior to this, he surrendered before the Patiala court and after medical checkup at Mata Koshalya Hospital, he was taken to jail. Early in the day, the Supreme Court refused to entertain Sidhu's plea, seeking more time to surrender a day after he was sentenced to one-year rigorous imprisonment in 1988 road rage case. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says family-based and dynastic parties damaged democracy in the country after independence. Jammu and Kashmir Delimitation Commission order comes into force as the central government issues notification. Supreme Court transfers Gyan Papi Mosque case to Varanasi District Judge. India gets highest ever FDI of 83.57 billion US dollars in the last financial year. EPFO adds 15.32 lakh net subscribers in March, 20% more than that in February. Former Punjab Congress President Navjot Singh Sidhu sent to Patiala jail following his conviction in road rage case. DRI and Coast Guard seize 218 kilograms of high-grade heroin worth 1,526 crore rupees in international market from two boats off Lakshadweep coast. Nine new ministers inducted in Ranil Vikramasinghe's cabinet in Sri Lanka, polling underway to elect a new parliament in Australia. IMD predicts relief from heat wave conditions across India from today. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals beat Chennai Super Kings by five wickets in Mumbai. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो आरोप आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक यूर लिस्निंग टू द मॉर्निंग न्यूज इन अमिटिकुलसली प्लान ज्वाइंट ऑपरेशन बाय द डायरेक्टरेट ऑफ रेवेन्यू इंटेलिजेंस एंड द कोस्ट गार्ड 218 किलोग्राम ऑफ हाई ग्रेड हेरोइन वर्थ 1526 करोड़ रुपीस इन इंटरनेशनल मार्केट हैव बीन सीज्ड फ्रॉम टू बोट्स ऑफ द कोस्ट ऑफ लक्षद्वीप आइलैंड्स the DRI and the Coast Guard officials acted on specific intelligence that two boats would be sailing from the Tamil Nadu coast to receive narcotics in huge quantities somewhere in the Arabian Sea. They kept a close watch over the past few days and intercepted the suspected boats near Lakshadweep Islands. The boats were brought to Kochi and a thorough search resulted in the seizure of the narcotics. Official sources said follow-up searches are taking place at various locations. Further investigation is in progress. Indian Minister of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare Narendra Singh Tomar said that the government is working very seriously to bring a sweet revolution in the country under the guidance of Prime Minister Modi. He was addressing a national level function held at Tent City 2 near Statue of Unity in Kevadia, Gujarat on the occasion of the World Bee Day yesterday. He said empowering the small farmers in the country is the goal of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. 
And now let's listen to our special program Azadi Ka Safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle. Every The 21st of May is the birth anniversary of Gandhian freedom fighter Omyo Kumar Das, who was born in 1895 in the Nagaon district of Assam. Popularly known as Lok Nayak, he was a social worker, a Gandhian by ideology, an educationist, and a well-known writer. Omyo was raised by his maternal grandfather Lakshmi Kant Barkakati, who was a nationalist himself. and influence the personality of young omeo khudur kanna ko gujare para bar bhuya ahi sile omeo was studying in tezpur high school when he took part in the 1905 partition of bengal movement at the same time he also worked as a laborer to generate the much needed funds for the nation's needs His nationalistic spirit was further strengthened in college when as a volunteer in the Calcutta session of Congress he heard stalwarts like Gandhi ji Surendranath Banerjee Annie Besant and other speakers When Gandhi ji launched the non-cooperation movement in 1920 Omeo worked to mobilize the youth around him to take part in the movement During this movement thousands of students left educational institutions foreign goods were boycotted liquor and opium shops were picketed and law courts were shunned In 1921 when Omeo was the general secretary of the Tarang district congress the movement gained even more momentum on one occasion while attempting to picket a liquor shop he was confronted with an angry woman who had come to purchase liquor Omeo convinced her about the negative impact of liquor consumption. The woman was so inspired by Omeo that she vowed to stop consuming liquor. She then participated actively in the non-cooperation movement. That was the kind of leadership Omeo displayed. When Gandhi ji launched the civil disobedience movement in 1930, Omeo took it upon himself to mobilize the youth. He was imprisoned many times for his participation in the freedom struggle. He was elected to Assam Legislative Assembly in 1937. He also served as a member of the Constituent Assembly. As the Labour Minister, he took the initiative to set up the Tea Plantation Workers Provident Fund for the benefit of tea plantation workers of Assam. And as the Education Minister, he reformed the education system by incorporating the concept of basic education. Omeo was also a social reformer and popular writer. Besides writing books like Gandhi ji jibon and Ohomot Mahatma, he also translated Gandhi ji's autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth into Assamese, Mor Khotto on the Khonor Kahini. In 1963, the government of India conferred the Padma Bhushan on him for his contributions to the nation. Omeo Kumar Das passed away on the 23rd of January 1975 leaving behind a legacy of his commitment and patriotism AIR news pays tribute to the great leader <laughs> We also remember Thala Singh a resident of Mandi Himachal Pradesh 
He was a soldier in the British Indian Army. During the Second World War, Thala Singh joined the Indian National Army in Malaya and served as Havaldar. He lost his life fighting the British forces on the Burmese front on the 21st of May 1944. We salute the brave son of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. President Ramnath Kovind has left for New Delhi after completing his visit to the island nations of Jamaica and St. Vincent and Grenadines in the Caribbean region. During the visit, the President addressed the parliaments of the two nations. He also witnessed the signing of MOUs with the two island states. More on this from our correspondent. The visit was significant as this was the first state visit by an Indian president to these Caribbean nations. Both the island nations share cultural and historical bonds with India. The president interacted with the Indian community present there. As a recognition of shared love of cricket between India and the island nations, eight cricket kits were also handed over by the president for aspiring young cricket players. The sandalwood saplings planted in the two countries by President Kovin will keep enriching the relations with their fragrance. Arun Kumar Singh for AIR News. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa administered oath to nine new cabinet ministers as political instability and economic crisis continue to affect the island nation. Officials from the President's office said more ministers will be sworn into the new cabinet by next week. Sri Lanka has seen weeks of public protests amid ongoing political and economic instability which has led to a shortage of essential supplies including food and medicines. In Australia, polling is underway for Parliament elections. Voters will elect MPs for all the seats in the House of Representatives and just over half the seats in the Senate. Voting is compulsory in Australia and about 17 million people are expected to cast a ballot this time round. The main political contenders are the ruling Liberal National Coalition and Labour. Either party will need to win at least 76 of the 151 seats in the House of Representatives to form a majority government. The election is also being held for 40 out of 76 Senate seats. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed grief over the incidents of thunderstorm and lightning in many districts of Bihar, wherein many people lost their lives. In a tweet, Mr. Modi prayed to give strength to the bereaved families to bear this immense loss. He said the local administration, under the supervision of the state government, is actively engaged in relief and rescue work. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has announced an ex of 4 lakh rupees each to the next of kin of those killed in the hailstorm in different parts of the state. He ordered free treatment to the injured people. 37 people were killed and 13 others injured in lightning and rain related incidents in different districts of the state. The Indian Meteorological Department has said that people will heave a sigh of relief from heat wave conditions across India from today. Severe heat wave conditions prevailed yesterday in Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Delhi, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and Punjab. Heat wave conditions also prevailed in Rajasthan where Dholpur recorded a maximum temperature of 47.8 degrees Celsius, the highest across the country. All India Radio News has launched a weekly interactive program, Abhyas, for competitive examinations. It is aimed at reaching out to students and job seekers preparing for competitive examinations. The program is in Hindi and is broadcast every Saturday between 9.30 to 10 p.m. Every week a subject is chosen. Students can ask questions through WhatsApp or email and a guest speaker or expert responds to their queries. Questions on each subject are selected on the basis of crowdsourcing from students across the country. The program also includes segments like explainer, fact file, examination calendar and question of the week. The eighth episode of the program will be aired on 100.1 FM Gold at 9.30 p.m. The topic of this episode is anthropology. Listeners can access it on Twitter at AIR News Alerts or on AIR News Official YouTube channel and also on the News on AIR app. All India Radio News has got an overwhelming response for the show with questions received from across the country. Professor R.P. Mitra from Delhi University's Department of Anthropology will reply to queries tonight. 
also for the next episode on the 28th of May. The subject chosen is Indian Polity Center State Relations. Students can send their queries on WhatsApp number 928-909-4044 or email on abhyas.air at gmail.com. The deadline for submission of questions is the 25th of May. So join us at All India Radio News for Abhyas every Saturday at 9.30 p.m. on 100.1 FM Gold. In IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals defeated Chennai Super Kings by five wickets to finish the league phase in top two at Brabant Stadium in Mumbai last night. Chasing 151 runs for victory, Rajasthan Royals reached the target with five wickets in hand and two balls to spare. Earlier, Chennai Super Kings won the toss and decided to bat first. Moin Ali's blistering 93 of 57 helped Chennai to post a challenging total of 150 for six in the stipulated 20 over. Rajasthan's Ravi Chandran Ashwin contributed an unbeaten 40 of 23. He was adjudged player of the match for his all-round performance. Now Rajasthan Royals set up a clash with Gujarat Titans in the first playoff on the coming Tuesday. And today Mumbai Indians will lock horns with Delhi Capitals at the Bankere Stadium in Mumbai at 7.30 p.m. Now, let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The National Capital Delhi is expected to have dust storm, a thunderstorm and maximum temperature will be nearly 40 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening and the temperature will be between 27 to 34 degrees Celsius. Chennai is predicted to have thunderstorm with the rain and maximum temperature may rise up to 38 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky, the minimum temperature was 29 and maximum will be 37 degrees Celsius. Srinagar will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or, or thunderstorm or dust storm. Jammu will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Leh will have gently cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Muzaffarabad is likely to have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. The temperature will hover between 20 and 36 degrees Celsius. Imphal, Gangtok, Shillong, Aizol, Kohima and Agartala are expected to have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thundershowers. And Itanagar may experience cloudy sky with intermittent rain. And now an overview of today's newspapers. The Hindustan Times quotes PM Modi as saying, don't divide Indians on linguistic lines. While the Tribune quoting the Prime Minister writes, opposition exploits fissures in society. Welfare schemes should reach every beneficiary, urges Modi, says the Hindu. Supreme Court shifts Gyan Bapi trial to experienced district judge, leads the pioneer. Monkeypox cases across Monkeypox cases cross 100 in Europe. WHO calls urgent meat, reports the Times of India. In their to screen arrivals for monkeypox signs, informs the Hindustan Times. Navjot Sidhu surrenders in Patiala court, sent to prison, informs the Asian Age. Wary of Biden's Asia visit, Beijing launches drills in South China Sea, reports the Indian Express. And finally, the Statesman reports that football Delhi president Shaji Prabhakaran urges FIFA to send a delegation to India after Supreme Court forms Committee of Administrators, COA, to run All India Football Federation, AIFF. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says family-based and dynastic parties damage democracy in the country after independence. Jammu and Kashmir Delimitation Commission order comes into force as a central government issue notification. Supreme Court transfers Gyanvapi Moss case to Varanasi District Judge. India gets highest ever FDI of $83.57 billion in the last financial year. EPFO adds 15.32 lakh net subscribers in March, 20% more than February. Former Punjab Congress President Navjot Singh Sidhu sent to Patiala jail following his conviction in road rage case. DRI and Coast Guard seized 218 kg of high-grade heroin worth 1,526 crore rupees in international market from two boats off Lakshwadeep coast. Nine new ministers in, inducted in Ranil Vikramasinghe cabinet in Sri Lanka. Polling underway to elect a new parliament in Australia. IMD predicts relief from heat wave conditions across India from today. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals beat Chennai Super Kings by five wickets in Mumbai. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.